Jamie and Kathy Tate Jameson took over a family-owned dairy farm in 1987, just before that year's massive share market crash. To keep the farm, they had to radically pair back the business. That evolved into an organic biodynamic system of farming, mainly because they couldn't afford conventional dairy farming inputs. They also recognised early on that if they were to survive, they'd have to add value to their milk. And with a lot of hard work, Biofarm Yogurt was created. They were one of the first farms certified organic in New Zealand. We aim to produce 2,000 litres of milk a day here. So we want to milk as few cows to get that amount. So there's 2,000 litres of yogurt per day processed in the factory. Now, at some times of the year in the summer when people's consumption is up, we do have the option of buying milk from local organic dairy farmers. Our product is a naturally fermented yoghurt. We do that by culturing milk with probiotic cultures, so there's no additives, no thickeners, so it's a natural yoghurt. That's this one here, and then this is the low-fat variety of that. We separate the cream out down at the farm dairy. And then we have two flavours. One, our new one, is wild apple. We use certified organic apple concentrate stirred into the natural yoghurt and our bush honey, which is very popular. Uh, we use, once again, certified organic honey from beekeepers in the South Island. These are an eco-lean pack, they're called. They're extremely environmentally friendly. They're not particularly people friendly. They're quite hard to use. So we've struggled to um, convince consumers that they're a good idea. They're a great idea for us because packaging is minimal with these. With the bottles, they come wrapped in plastic. There's lots of cardboard. With these, they just come flat in a roll. Uh, so they're, from a farming point of view, much less rubbish. Plastic bottles take an awful lot of plastic per litre of product. This takes very, very little. Of the order of 10 grams here per litre and 25 grams for a plastic bottle. The packaging arrives in with a strip along the top here which the machine cuts off so you've always got perfectly sterile packaging. Then uh, it opens it, pulls it from either side like so, nozzle squirts in the milk and then it moves further down and a small hole there, a puff of air goes in and blows this handle up so you've got the whole package ready to go, sitting on your table with a puffed up handle and uh, tear off spout. It's a very, very quick machine, 3,000 packages per hour. Hygiene, very, very good. And all the latest uh, computer controlled adjustments, so simplicity itself to operate. We've been certified organic since 1986. And now in 2014, the certification process has gone away from enabling us to actually talk about who we are and what we do and our connection with our products. So the other certification we've got is an indigenous brand. It's Hua Parikore. And it allows us to actually maintain those stories. And uh, we're re really proud to have that certification. Hua Parikore is about enabling you to keep that connection between you, the person producing the food, and the end consumer. So hua parikori means that you have a relationship with the environment, which includes the waterways through your property, and that it's real, and it can go back to how your ancestors farmed here. So it's not just about today, it's about the stories that your family has brought with you to the property and how you want to see yourself into the future. So it's a broad certification. It's not just for Māori producers, it's for anyone who values their story and wants some recognition for that story. The honey that goes into our yoghurt, who produces that honey? What's their story? Well, we have a fantastic honey man on the west coast of the South Island and we talk about the way he treats his bees. And to us, that's an important story, part of our, our story, is the beekeepers and the organic apple orchardists. So we love telling those stories, and it, it's the fabric of who we are. It comes fairly easily to me, because I started off in the dairy industry in 1969 at a 
place called Manawaru, which probably no longer exists. Then I worked in a laboratory for New Zealand Co-op Dairy at Waitā, and then later I was in ice cream. So I had a fair sort of a background in the industry, right from the cups on, right through to the top end. So from my point of view, it was just doing what I knew. We were able to pay our farm $20 a kilogram of milk solids for a year-round supply of milk. And that year-round aspect is critical. You can't do a value-added product when you've got no milk for three months of the year. Compliance would be the biggest challenge for most operators in the same situation as us. There's a never-ending stream of paperwork to be completed, and even the big players in the industry sometimes struggle with the compliance aspects. It was definitely an economic decision to go that way because we couldn't see a future in the industry when you happen to own a very expensive farmland right beside a city. That was the challenge for us, a family farm that was worth too much money and it was never going to work if we are turning milk into milk powder. So that was what we had to do and the opportunity is still there for a farmer in a similar situation to do the same thing. It's important to uh, be in sustainable agriculture. These days, the two things have uh, separated somewhat. It used to be that organic meant sustainable. Today, they're almost different. Sustainable agriculture is what we're doing, and that includes profitability, the environmental aspect, and the social aspect. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.